One board, one tree. It's the project that keeps on giving. This beauty will add that rustic decor item that you have been missing, both inside and out. Free printable plans are in the description. You can either use a cedar fence picket or you could use a six foot one by six if you want your tree to have a little extra class. Also know they're gonna be slightly taller than these because the board thickness is a little bit more. To start, we are going to rip this down to one inch thick. That'll give us five total pieces to work with. And you're gonna see me boop on my vacuum. If you guys come across a piece like this one where it is pretty close to snapping, go ahead and just save that one for last. That's when we're gonna be cutting the smallest increment pieces and you can easily avoid this little knot spot where it's actually ripping apart versus where you're cutting the larger pieces of the wood. With these five strips, we're going to be cutting five at 11 inches, five at 10 inches, five to nine inches. Guess what? Five to eight inches, five to seven inches, five to six inches, only three to five inches. Just kidding, we need five at five inches. Five to four inches, and five to three inches. Today's video is sponsored by the number five, because when you see one of your friends, you don't give them a high six. High six your friends? That doesn't even make sense. I'm taking lunch, fix it, fix it. It's actually sponsored by you guys and Super Chats because Aaron broke his phone today and that's how he does everything for his YouTube channel, so. <laughs> what stress? <laughs> With all of your pieces laid out in front of you, it is time to mark for the dowel rod. So what I like to do is just go ahead and make the pieces kind of look like a tree so they are roughly centered. They don't have to be perfect by any means. And then I just find center of the last and first board, make my marks onto those, and then using a random board, I go ahead and just mark all of the rest of them. And I want a line that is heavy enough that I can actually see it, but light enough that it's easy to sand off. Since we are using a 5 8 dowel, I am using a 5 8 Forstner bit in the drill press. If you guys are using just a hand drill, it doesn't need to be perfectly centered into the board, just kind of close because we are going to be chopping off the ends once assembled. If you are using the cedar board, you will have some splintering in the bottom. That's just because it's a very lightweight, porous wood, so it's going to blow out the bottom more than what that pine board's going to do. Otherwise, we got it pretty close to actually centered this direction. So I am going to go ahead and just take a piece of scrap wood and then line up with my hole. So I'm going to actually go just a smidge more forward and then take a couple clamps, throw some clamps onto here. Now when I go to finish drilling out the holes, I don't have to worry about this direction. I only have to worry about this direction. And with this mark, I can just line it up with my pilot. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. If you guys are using a regular just a twist drill bit, you can go ahead with your mark just facing down. Once you find the center, you can just make a mark on your fence and then know that that's where you're going to line up to drill out your hole. So go ahead, get all of your pieces skewered onto your dowel rod. I struggled quite a bit with mine. The entire thing could have been its own blooper reel. It was ridiculous. So with that, I created this little topper piece. All that I did was I took a piece of scrap wood, and then you're just going to go ahead and drill a hole at the very end of it, and then that way you can cut it off at the miter saw. That way, you know, you keep your hand toes at the farthest distance available since my scraps are limited except for this piece, and we need him later. So go ahead, make this little guy, and he just gets popped onto the end and then nailed into place, just two nails. One on each side for him. With him nailed into place, 
we are just going to go ahead and squish the rest of the boards kind of up against him. See what I mean? Mine are tight. With the tree still on the workbench, you are going to snug up the slats by just putting pressure against this piece and then nailing it into place. Remember that the boards do need a little bit of room so that you can still turn them into the spiral, but you want them to be snug enough that they're not going to spin around on their own if there's a strong gust of wind. Where the 11 inch meets the 10 inch and the 6 inch meets the 5 inch and all the way up the entire tree, you are just going to draw a line so that every single board is getting touched by the pencil. So you want each one of them to actually have just that slight mitered angle on them so that way if again it's folded up like this, it's going to look like a Christmas tree. So you're just going to go ahead and draw that line pretty aggressive on this one. It is going to get cut off. So this is the line that we are going to go ahead and trim off of the actual tree itself. Go ahead and repeat it for the other side as well. If you guys have a bandsaw or a jigsaw, you could go ahead and just cut that line. Be cautious that the slats don't move around on you while doing so. I am actually going to cut mine off using the circular saw. And to do that, I do want to go ahead and set up a fence so that way I'm cutting a perfectly straight line. So I know that the distance from the edge of my blade to the edge of my base is actually an inch and a half. So I am going to go ahead and just measure in an inch and a half and make a line and then inch and a half it doesn't have to go all the way down that's not important and then with that line you can go ahead and get a fence set up so we are cutting this edge to be straight with the circular saw how i like to do that is go ahead just put down a piece of insulation foam put your work piece on top of that and then i get a board that is big enough that i can go ahead and kneel onto because I like the main arteries to be as close to the saw as possible. God, that wasn't a good joke, I'm sorry. So then I do go ahead, put a knee onto here just to kneel. And then I know that the inch and a half, inch and a half to my saw. Get your cord out of the way. Both hands. And there you go. Now you have both sides of it trimmed to look like a tree. I am just going to go ahead and wear safety glasses for this entire clip since I didn't wear them when I was running the circular saw. My bad. I, if you hadn't noticed, I even had one entire side cut and that was because I was like, oh dang, I got to put safety glasses on. And then I, now I'm out of sides. So no safety glasses. You are going to take that long board that was left and divide it into two equal pieces. Go ahead and drill out the five eighths holes for each of these guys. And then with our minimal scrap pile, I did cut out just two inch and a half pieces for these. If you do have blowout, you do want to make sure that the nice side is facing up. So when you go to nail these in, put them on the bottom like this. Sweet. So that way you get one of these little guys and then again they're just going to go like this onto the bottom of the tree. So what I will generally do, again you start with the one with the feet, is to pop him up, use this guy as just a spacer. And I like them since this guy is nailed down, this is also going to be nailed down. So just two nails into him. And then for this guy, we are going to make sure that he is perpendicular to this other side. And then fire in a few nails into that. There. 
there he is. Oh, spiral tree, oh, spiral tree, you fill my heart with music. Hey, just hit the subscribe button, would ya? Media gold. See ya. For some reason, I kind of feel like having kebabs tonight. You know, a little steak, a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of onion, green pepper. Mmm.